234, San Diego Sports Leader. It's the Mighty 1090, the Scott and Billy Ray Show. Scott and BR coming up at the top of the hour. San Diego State, winners last night. Colorado State on the road upcoming this Saturday, 7 p.m. here on the Mighty 1090. 7745, that was the final score last night. It's been a while since we had Jim Sterk on the program. He's the director of athletics at San Diego State, and he's good enough to join us now for a few minutes on the Mighty 1090. Jim, good to talk to you. Darren Smith, thank you very much. Hey, Darren, thanks for thanks for having me. Uh, that Your previous guest was uh, way above my uh, my academic level on the, on the sciences there. Yeah, well, you, know, you and me both, birds of a feather, pal. I, you know, I understood about <laughs> 65% of what it was that he was saying. Yeah, <laughs> good stuff, the- though. I thought so. I thought we all learned a little something, hopefully. Do you know, what are the rules for college football in terms of how inflated a football needs to be? That's a very good question. I don't know if it's that scientific. I, you know, <laughs> I know the, the officials look at the balls and have to approve them before, but I, I don't know if they, maybe they randomly do a, a, you know, a, 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 a pressure test. I'm not sure about that. Okay. Oh, we'll get Rocky on the phone. We'll ask him. I mean, the type of thing that Rocky probably never thought of a million years ago. Now, all of a sudden, it's what we deal with in 2015. Well, Jim, there's a bunch of reasons to to have you on and talk to you here to kind of get a state of the Aztecs. Let me start with your basketball program, which won again last night. Um, and just your thoughts on the way it's gone, not only for your own program here, but but what you see with the league. I think according to RPI, I thought that the Mountain West is right now considered the 11th best league in college basketball. That's that about right to you? Um, I, I've heard that. Yeah, I, I think you know we we met last week, last this past weekend. We were in D.C. for the NCAA convention. We met and we we've talked about what you know what types of things you know we can do. You know, is it a cycle? Uh, yeah, you know, the, we're, we had a, a series with the Missouri Valley Conference that, you know, the years we've got got five teams in. I, I don't know if that was directly, you know, um, directly uh, attributed to that, but I know uh, we we look at, uh, you know, we're looking at all those things, and and it's uh, it's fun to be on top. Um, you know, I, I think we need to stay on top. I think. You know where we had a bad loss at Fresno. It was it's important for us to sit on top of the league and and try to win the win the league and then win the tournament and and not have to worry about it. But obviously we want some other teams along with us. So right now I, I've heard you know two teams in or possibly three with Wyoming and Colorado State um, with their RPIs are high. Talking to Jim Sterk, he's the athletic director at San Diego State. San Diego sports leader is the mighty 1090. Um, yeah, I wonder also your role as the athletic director here um, in monitoring and, and updating what's going on with Dwayne Poli. You know, yesterday we had Brian Dutcher on, and he was telling us that he had traveled for the first time. And, you know, you're the AD, which means you oversee all of this. Um, I know it's not about football. It's about him. It's about, I mean, basketball, excuse me. It's about him. It's about his health. Um, but where is the whole athletic department now as, as it relates to Dwayne Poli and you know, potentially his future as an Aztec? Yeah, I think um, you know we're we're in a process, and I think he, he's probably one. You know, he, he doesn't want to be tested anymore. He's had he's been through a lot, and um, obviously, you know, scared the heck out of all of us. And you know, just great that that you know he he was just I think unconscious for about 20 seconds or so, but but gone through going through, and and I don't know if he has any more left, but I I think they're they're starting to you know allow him to you know, do some more things, therefore travel and things like that. And I, I think that's, those are positive signs, you know, when and where, um, you know, I, I don't know. And, um, but the thing is, you know, with him, we, you know, we want to make sure him and his parents know, you know, he, he has a scholarship, whether he plays or not. And we, we're not going to force that issue. And it's, it's kind of their timeline with the, with the physicians to determine when he plays or, or if he plays uh, in the future. Okay, so no expectation as of today, then, uh, one way or the other. No, I think he, he's the good thing is he's feeling good. I think he, uh, he's making progress. So I, I think he's, he's probably getting anxious to do something. We're talking to Jim Stark. The other thing, and you know, you, I, I realize for a lot of people in the city, Jim, and I, I don't mean this with any sort of disrespect, but for a lot of people, you know, it's the stadium issues about the Chargers in the city of San Diego, and people tend to overlook the fact that you guys are, you know, the second tenant there at Qualcomm Stadium. You're a significant drawing power. 
uh, the bowl games, having a Division One college football team. I wonder what you've been able to – what do you make and decipher out of the last week since the state of the city last week with Kevin Faulkner up until the rhetoric that went back and forth here? What do you make about what's going on here, specific with Qualcomm Stadium? Well, I should ask you, you're on the front line. I mean, yeah. you, uh, you, you broke that story with uh, having those, those folks on. So I, I, I think, um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to working with the city, and we have. We're uh, obviously, you know, closely connected with the city and, uh, and Ron Roberts and the county and, and uh, the chamber and all that. And so um, right now we're, we're, uh, we're looking forward to working with all parties involved in, on a long-term solution. But I think, you know, you, you bring up the point. We're, we're an institution that's not going away. We're here. We're part of San Diego. Um, we're, uh, I think our football is alive and well. We've gone to five straight bowls, and we're, we're looking to even, even raise the bar even higher. And, and I, I think Rocky's really excited about the future. So, so you know, whether, whatever happens, we're going to have football. We're going to play football. And, and uh, I, I think that... You know, the city is committed to, to that respect, so it's not like, you know, something will disappear on us uh, no matter what happens. And, but, but we're looking forward to working with all parties and, and making sure that, that, you know, things are good for the, for the entire city and, and all parties involved. Well, how satisfied were you with what the mayor had to say a week ago? Because clearly the Chargers were unsatisfied with what they heard. Well, you know, I, I, I think, you know, he, he's a sharp guy. I think uh, there's a lot of great people, you know, you guys, uh, what you or Scott and BR talked about, Malin Burnham, you know, the Ron Fowlers of the world, I think you had Ron on. I, I think they're, um, those kind of people uh, to have involved are, are very positive, and I think that's what Kevin's trying to do, and, and uh, uh, I think they'll look at, you know, the best solutions, and, and I think, it, you know, at some point then the Chargers have to make a decision on what they do. Chargers seem to think that downtown is their best option. What does that mean for you? Um, it's probably our third best. <laughs> you know, I, if I had my druthers and, and you know, uh, we didn't lay Viejas in the old, old uh, Aztec Bowl, that would have been the first, first option. But, um, you know, it's, we're, we're different. You know, we, our, our students are, are probably the most important part of, of uh, you know, our fans and, and getting them involved. And so, I think the further away the stadium is, the the less desirable for us. So I think um, Qualcomm, uh, we've been able to with the trolley now right right in the middle of campus. We get you know seven or eight. I actually one game we had nine thousand students at a game. Um, the, that's an easy one for us. That's an easier uh, downtown would be a little bit more problematic. Um, so for those reasons, um, I would you know prefer the closer the better, but it just depends on a lot of factors. It depends on what's going on. But I heard you earlier, and we do have a, a lease with – our lease is with the city, and, and Qualcomm doesn't go away no matter what happens. We, we have five years to, uh, to determine what, you know, what we do in the future with that – you know, where we play. So um, if there's a trigger and the, and the, and the Chargers aren't playing there, then, then we have five years. A okay. minimum of five. Okay, so that is actual fact here because sometimes, you know, you hear something and we just parrot it. You know, we all just become a bunch of parrots and one person says it and we all just repeat it ad nauseum. So I'm glad to know that at least that would buy you a little bit of time here. How much time do you spend thinking about this sort of stuff? With everything else that you have to deal with, with all the other programs that you have to deal with on the Mesa, how much time do you think about this? Well, football is, is uh, you know, very important to us and, and obviously in, in even just being in the league, you know, so that it, it's very important to us. And I think we have the biggest upside on, on football. Um, it had kind of a dark decade, if you will, of, of non-success, and, and we're climbing out of that. And I, I think we have an opportunity to really capture the, the, the fun and the imagination of the city and support of the city uh, community, broader community, and um, we've been able to grow it, and I, I want to continue to do that. And so I, I think about it a lot. We, we have a, a campaign that we announced before the end of the year, a rise to 25, and, and that's, that's committed to really looking at, 
you know, the, the community engagement, the facility, um, you know, finding a long-term solution for, for football is, is on that list. And, and then fundraising, our annual fund for scholarships and, and special projects and, and endowment are, are very important. So all that pulls together, and it's, football is a big one. No doubt about it. Speaking of which, uh, since the end of the regular season of college football, how many any phone conversations with the Big Twelve? Bob Bowlesby, the commissioner there. <laughs> I, I've had conversations with them, but uh, they're they're not in the uh, in the expansion mode yet. I think they uh, you know they they had a situation where they were close. Uh, they didn't get any team in, but they could have almost had two if they didn't you know. So uh, they were close to that as well. So I, I think for us. You know, the Mountain West has turned in the opportunity. You know, our, what was really upsetting to our coaches and fans and everyone, you know, Boise went and played in the Fiesta Bowl. Right. We're, we're ahead of those suckers by 20, um, and, and we let them get away from us. And, and that's, I think, that game and, and uh, uh, winning a few others could, have put it, could put us in a situation like that. So I think that really whet the appetite of, of the coaches, our players, the you know, community. I think we, we can continue to grow this program and have, some real, have a lot of fun with it. Okay. So no, you're not telling us that you went politicking out there to try to say, hey, you know, maybe if you guys had a conference championship game, you'd be in the top four. I saw Rocky's final ballot, by the way. I saw that he put it. I think he put Baylor in the top four. Did he? I, I didn't see his he, – he doesn't confide in me on that for some reason. I don't know why. But. Well, they made it public. I think it was on USA Today. It was either oh, okay. TCU or Baylor. He put one of the Big 12 schools in there, I think. Thought maybe he was playing politics. Yeah, yeah, who knows. <laughs> well, Jim, we always appreciate it. It's good to catch up with you. Thank you so much for the time. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, real interesting about downtown would probably be our third choice.